So let's go on with the following uh, exercise, which is print numbers. We can use only the right function. And we have to create a function that displays all digits on a single line by ascending order. We are still dealing with characters. We are still dealing with the ASCII code. So you already know how to do it. I highly suggest you to try yourself and then maybe watch my solution. As usual, I include my Unix standard header file to use the right function to send characters in the standard output. Then I create my print numbers function. This function doesn't return any value and doesn't take any value as argument. So it performs an action. Numbers are just symbols. So they are stocked, they are coded inside the ASCII code. Let's have a look. As you can see, I have my numbers or better my symbols stocked from number 48 to 57. So when I want to send to the terminal, to the standard output, the symbol zero, I need the character 48, right? The lesson here is that numbers are just symbols like the ones from the alphabet, as you can see. So this is maybe a little bit counterintuitive because I have a number that encodes a number, but you don't have to think in this fashion. You have to think about symbols in this case. So the number zero, the character zero, is just a fancy shape for the computer that has to be drawn inside the standard output. The value zero is another beast, is the, is the binary value zero where there is no transistor turned on, right? The symbol eight, for example, is like two zeros, one over the other, that is encoded by the number 56. You get the point, right? You have a series of symbols that represent the number. The key, why I cannot send to the standard output directly a number? Well, because I need a character for the write function. If I send to the standard output uh, the value zero, what do I really send is the character null, which is a uh, no character symbol. If I send the value 10, I'm not sending a 10, like a one and a zero, I'm sending the value new line, which is the one you use to go on the new line. So wrap your head around this concept of symbols and values and the ASCII code itself. It's pretty simple, right? It's not nothing fancy. Okay, let's go back to the exercise. So following the line of reasoning of the previous exercises, what do I do? Well, I want to stock in memory a variable that I will increase readily, provided it is simply a number. And at every iteration, I want to flush its content into the standard output, right? This is the main idea of sending some symbols, some values into the standard output, right? So what do I do? I say, dear compiler, just give me two bytes. Again, here I use the short data type just to prove that it doesn't hold that I need to use only chars for characters. The really important part is that the data type is from integer type, right? Okay, this is an important point in my opinion that initially I was struggling to understand. The name of the data type is basically an abstraction. Here, what I'm really saying to the compiler, hey dude, give me two bytes, treat these two bytes as integers and call these two bytes n. Okay, this is what, what is happening here. Then I say, okay, given these two bytes, set inside these bytes the value 47, of course in binary form. Why 47? Well, because in uh, my while loop, I use this condition, which is plus plus n minor to 58. So as you should know, the plus plus operator is gonna increase the value n before it is used. So here n becomes 48. 48 is indeed the symbol zero, the first of my list, right? So I just increase the value to get the number 48. So n, just before making the comparison with 58, becomes 48, okay? Is 48 less than 58? Well, of course. Then we call our fancy function write that is gonna send in my standard output as always, the value which is inside my byte called n, and it's gonna send only one byte, okay? So why did I do this prefix increment here? It turns out that I can bypass the use of graph parentheses if I have only one line inside my while block. Let me explain better. If I remove my prefix increment from here and I move it here at this line, as you can see, I had to add these two parentheses here, these two graphs. So at the end of the day, I had to add three lines, right? One, two, and three, right? Three lines more just just because I haven't used the prefix increment. So like this is much more readable, right? It is better and you should always strive for readability. So I wrote code like this just because this is what you will find, what you will stumble upon in real life. This is more cryptic maybe initially, but it is more compact. and It is the way usually programmers write and share code. So get used to this kind of writing, more compact, more succinct, more short. It is gonna be more cryptic initially, but 
get used to it. It will it will pay its dividends to understand and be able to be succinct with your code. So now I have my function. Let's try to run it. So as usual, uh, I make my GCC with numbers and run. Okay. As you can see, it works perfectly. This is my first function, the one you just saw. And this is another function that now I'm going to show you. So one last thing about this code. What would happen, in your opinion, if I change my plus plus from prefix to postfix? What's your opinion? Let's try out. As you can see, this time I have a character more that has been written, right? I leave you with this riddle, which is pretty simple, but wrap your head around this little bug if you want. Okay, my second function, I basically do the same. I tell the compiler, hey, give me two bytes, call these two bytes n, and stock inside these two bytes the character slash, which is the character, in your opinion, number? Of course, the number 47, the one just before the symbol zero. So the code is the same, actually. I just point out that the characters are just a fancy way of using digits, numbers, and basically that's it. All the, the main ideas that I already explained in my previous videos. So I won't repeat here, just go back to the print alphabet videos, especially the first one. Okay, this is a pretty simple. I'm totally sure you understand the point of the ASCII code, the characters, the right function, the fact that the data type is just a fancy way of calling bytes in memory. So I just want to allocate two bytes with the short. Here I can use, of course, uh, char, which is the right data type to use for characters. Well, because one byte is more than enough to represent all the important characters in the English language, at least. So we have a char, we are just saying, hey, compiler, I need a byte. Why byte? Well, because for a char, it's totally enough. That's it. Okay, so let me use just a byte. Well, you have always to keep in mind that these languages have been generated in times where memory was expensive. Nowadays, you have RAM of 16 gigabytes. What is the difference if you allocate one byte, two bytes, four bytes, or eight bytes? There is no difference, practically speaking. Back in the days, it was really important. So you had to use the memory very parsimoniously. So C really gives you the power to control really surgically how you allocate memory. It is pretty cool, I think. I really like C because it gives you the, the hacker power. It really allows you to control everything of the computer. I think I've covered with the first videos all the main ideas behind uh, the ASCII code and how everything is just mapped inside the computer as binary numbers. And basically that's it. All right. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.